In this video, we're going to talk about a couple of functions that deal with structures. So the first two functions, size and length, there's nothing really new here. Um, but I just wanted to point out that the number of field names in a structure has nothing to do with the dimensions of the structure. So meaning that if I have a structure, um, I'm just going to draw it out. I'm not going to use like the struct function. So if I have a structure that let's say has a field name, name, field name, age, field name, eye color, field name, sport. Uh, let's say all of these have thing K23 B sport T. I'm really lazy, right? If I have this structure, if I called size on this structure, so RC uh, size, let's say that this is called ST of ST, I would get back that this is a one by one structure. Field names have absolutely nothing to do with the dimensions of the structure. It's also just length one as well. And so when we talk about structure arrays, you'll start to see that I can have multiple of these boxes stacked on top of each other or next to each other. And that's how I create rows and columns. But alone, this is just a one by one structure. Field names have nothing to do. There's four field names, but it does not have anything to do with the number of rows. The next two functions, set field and get field, are used in terms of creating structures and also accessing parts of structures. Um, but I'll say they're probably some of the most useless functions <laughs> that we'll talk about in the class because they can be easily replaced. Um, and then also how you use them sometimes might cause some complexities. So for instance, let's say, so set field does exactly what you think it does. It sets a certain field name or sets a certain value to a certain field name in a structure. So let's say I had, um, let's say I had a structure, let's just say it was like struct, let's say I just had n for name, and let's say currently it was Canton, okay? Um, yeah. And so let's say I want to use set field in order to create a field name called age. What I would do is, so the inputs for set field, field, are first the name of the structure, so in this case this is st, and then next the field name that I want to create or that I want to change, so that let's say I wanted to put in an age, and then last the value, let's say I wanted to put in 23, okay? But the thing about set field that you have to understand is that it does not actually change the structure that you have in the input. Instead, it creates a copy of that structure and then adds a field name and a certain value, or it might change the certain value at that field name, but it does not change the actual structure. So in this case here, if I just had this, this line of code, let's say I didn't set it to anything, and then afterwards I said something like a is equal to st.age, I would get an error because age does not exist in struct. This line of code by itself did absolutely nothing to my structure. It created a copy of my structure with now name Cantuan and the field name age is 23, but then it doesn't save that to anything. Okay, so if I actually want to change my structure itself, I have to overwrite the structure that I have in the input. So therefore, I would have to set this back to be st. So now in this case, a would give me 23 because now I've actually changed that structure. This is very important because a lot of the time on test, we'll have something like a set field here. We won't set it to anything or we'll set it to some other variable, but just you have to know that it's not changing that actual structure and the input unless you overwrite it. And so the second function, get field, is just like it sounds, it gets a certain value at a field name. Um, so, let's draw a line. So in this case here, I can say something like, um, let's say my name, and so why, my name, and then I can say get field. And then I give it the name of my structure, st, then I give it the field name. So in this case here, let's say it was age. Well, not age, I said this was going to be name. So let us say that this is name. Okay, so in this case here, my name will just be Cantuan. So the reason why I said that these are probably useless functions in class is because you can do these same exact things using the dot operator. 
right? You can use the dot operator to assign a certain value to a certain field name. You can use the dot operator in order to access a certain value at a certain field name. So these two functions aren't really useless in that case. However, you have to know about them because they might show up on the test, especially set field, in terms of um, understanding that set field doesn't actually change the structure unless you overwrite it. The next function we're going to talk about is called rm field. And so rm stands for remove field. And so suppose I had a structure. Let's say it was a struct. I'm going to just do the same exact thing. So let's say it's n. Let's say it's cant1. And then a for age, let's say it's 23. Okay, let's say for instance, I did not want anyone to know my age. Let's say I do not, so I created this and then later on I'm like, oh, JK, I do not want that uh, field name age to be there, or in this case, A. So right now, if I did something like this, if I said st dot A, so this is age, that's for age, um, is equal to empty brackets. What this is going to do is this creates, so I have my structure N and A, Originally, it was Canton, and then it was also 23. When I do that line of code, this structure changes to have the field name, name, Canton, and an A will just be empty brackets. So this just deletes kind of like the value there. This does not delete the entire field name. Like the field name is still there. If I want to actually remove the entire field name from my structure, um, then I have to use iron field. So in this case right here, if if I were to just um, set it to empty brackets, if I were to say a is st dot a, this case here, I would get back empty brackets. But I want it to error. I want that field name to not be there at all. And I have to use arm field to do that. Arm field is similar to set field in the sense that it creates a copy of your structure with that field removed. However, if you want it to be useful, you have to assign it back to the original structure. So arm field takes in the name of the structure um, and then it takes in the field name. So in this case, let's say it was A. So if I just had it like this, if I just had it like this and then I said something like B is st dot a so if i just had that and i didn't set it to anything this would give me back empty brackets because arm field would do absolutely nothing however if i were to set it back so arm field st a and then i were to say c is st dot a this would give me an error because the field name a no longer exists so arm field is the only way in order to completely remove a field name from a structure. All right, so the last function we're gonna talk about is called field names. And just like the name suggests, it produces back all the field names of a structure. So let's assume that I had some structure struct. Let's say I had a field name called name. What's name? And let's say it was Serena. And then let's say I had a field name called sport. Let's say it was tennis. Okay, so now if I used field names, so field names, field names takes in a structure and it outputs, I'll just call it fn, a collection of all the field names. So thinking about here, when I had to input my field names, they're as strings, right? So field names are kind of, they're, they're strings when we input them in the struct function. And so if I'm taking out all of my field names as strings, what would FN, what would field names have to produce back? What's a good way of um, collecting a bunch of strings? And the answer is celerase, because in a celery you can have just each word inside of its own cell. Because if you try to put it inside of a vector, it would all be smushed together and you wouldn't necessarily know when one word starts and when another word starts. So field names produces back a celery. And also, it produces back a column celery. So therefore, it produces back an n by one or a vertical celery, where it has one column and then multiple rows. So in this case here, I would get back the celery name, uh, not age, it is sport, sport. So this is a two by one celery that contains my field names inside of it.